Hello, my name is Landon Wiest. I'm the LCMS product manager here at Shimazu Scientific Instruments. In this video, we're going to cover how to clean the source on an LCMS triple quad. For this procedure, you can also refer to section 7.2 or 7.3 in the LCMS 8045, 8050, 8060, or 8060 NX instruction manuals. You will need the following tools and supplies. An H8 wrench, LCMS grade methanol or water, and a replacement capillary assembly. After turning off all gas flows and heaters using Lab Solutions software, allow the unit to cool to room temperature, then remove the LC connection tubing. Unlock and remove the ionization unit. Remove the corona needle if present. Adjust the projection length of the ESI capillary to less than 0 mm to prevent injury to you or the instrument. If the ESI capillary needs to be replaced, retract and remove the ESI spray needle by loosening the locking collar and rotating the peak nut counterclockwise using the wrench. Once the spray needle has been loosened from the screw threads, pull straight up to remove the assembly. Remove the peak fitting containing the capillary from the peak nut as shown and discard the assembly. After removal of the ionization unit, the source may be hot if recently in operation. Wait for the ionization unit, heater flange, and heated block to cool before performing any cleaning or maintenance. Use a lab wipe and an appropriate solvent to remove buildup on the metal surfaces of the source, including the inside wall of the ionization unit and the tip of the ionization unit. Gauze or an abrasive kit is available to help with the cleaning process. Water is recommended for salts and methanol for organics. While exposed, clean the heater flange, heated block, and sampling cone. Avoid cleaning the tip of the desolvation line as this can cause a blockage of the tubing. If the tip of the DL is badly soiled, replace the DL. If the soiling is severe, remove the heater flange by loosening the two nuts with the provided Allen wrench. Pull the flange out using the removal tool. Remove the two screws with a Phillips screwdriver to remove the sampling cone from the heated block. Clean the rear of the sample cone with an appropriate solvent. If the heated block is soiled, scrub it with a nylon brush and then wipe it clean with a moistened lab wipe. The screws and sampling cone can be cleaned in an ultrasonic bath with methanol solution. Once dry, reassemble the cleaned sampling cone, heated block and heater flange and reinsert them into the instrument. Retighten the bolts with the Allen wrench so that they are snug, but do not over tighten them. After cleaning is complete, install a new ESI capillary assembly if the capillary was removed. Ensure that the capillary is not protruding beyond the peak fitting before screwing it into the peak nut. Screw it in the rest of the way as shown and then tighten the peak nut to finger tight. Insert the combined nut and assembly gently to avoid bending the capillary. This is best done by gently dropping the capillary into the source. It often self-aligns. Adjust the ESI spray needle protrusion to 0.5 to 1 mm by making the needle flush with the tip and turning the assembly clockwise. Each 180 degree turn extends the needle by 0.5 mm. Add the locking nut to secure the capillary in place. Now reinstall the corona needle if present. Reattach the clean ionization unit and lock it in place. Reconnect the LC tubing and initiate the heaters and gas flows using lab solutions. For more information about Shimazu mass spectrometers, visit us at www.ssi.shimazu.com.
excellence in science. Shimazu.